The terrorists had warned they would strike Kenya's capital. They'd even named the Westgate Mall as a likely target. And now the extremist force Al-Shabaab has struck with horrific impact. Al-Shabaab, which means the youth in Arabic, grew out of Somalia's 20 years as a failed state. Just like the Taliban in Afghanistan, they want to establish a fundamentalist Islamic regime. At the height of their power seven years ago, they controlled huge swathes of southern and central Somalia, including most of the capital Mogadishu and the key port of Kismayo. But since then, a UN-backed international military force has pushed them out of those major cities, and experts say Al-Shabaab's decision to strike a soft target in Nairobi, in neighbouring Kenya, should not be seen as a sign of strength. They've had a change of leadership. They've refocused to an extent. They are struggling. They need to establish themselves firmly in Somalia, and they have had a, a fight there of late. And I think they're trying to ease pressure on themselves in Somalia. The choice of target is revenge for the Kenyan government committing 4,000 of its soldiers to that fight. When Ugandan troops were performing the same role three years ago, Al-Shabaab organized its only other major terrorist attack on foreign soil. In Uganda's capital, Kampala, suicide bombers targeted people watching the World Cup final, killing 74. Those who follow the politics of the region say this latest act of terror will backfire. Kenya's resolve to stay in Somalia and to deal with terrorism there will get hardened. And I think Western powers will also seize on this as an opportunity and justification for increasing funding for the military operations inside Somalia. And the reason they'll seize that opportunity? Because Al-Shabaab, even weakened and squabbling internally, has proved it has the capacity to kill and terrorise on a massive scale, far from its power base. And unchecked, that kind of capacity poses a risk that could stretch way beyond this part of Africa. Catherine Jones, 5 News.